they are just the most pigmented, the most blurring, and they come in beautiful natural shades. Then I'm going to go down. Wouldn't have even had to see the product as long as it had a magnetic lid and just did this. I'm sold. It is beautifully packaged, pure molten gold. Totally, totally be wearing this in the comfort of my own home. Super loaded tinted. That was like trying to shuck an oyster. I'd like to say this was a random occurrence, but this this is what I look like even even on a good day. Mmm, mushroom. It's giving. Mushroom. Let's just have faith in gravity, people. It'll drop. They'll drop out. I'm just going to pretend to be Kylie Jenner here for a minute. Okay, not sure if I'm early on in the piece or late to the party on this one, but as I tediously get ready for what I want to be a glamorous premiere, but in reality a late night showing of, wait for it, the Barbie movie, aka the Barbie movie. Sorry, I always like to be a little overdramatic. I get so nervous when I start a vlog that, that I kind of overperform. A bit like our friend Jim Carrey. We just want people to like us. Anyway, back to the movie. I know, boring. Everyone's doing it and if everyone's doing it, it's boring. But we do this kind of boring stuff on my channel, so sit down, shut up and eat your dinner. That was a little humour, people. I'd, I'd never say that to anyone. <laughs> okay, hopefully I'm giving less mushroom Barbie and more Kylie Jenner Barbie. Oh my goodness. Million dollar idea for Mattel, if they're listening. Kardashian Barbie. If there aren't any already, I mean, what a collector's piece. In fact, they are kind of walking Barbies because they're pretty much perfect. Anyway, I digress as if I, I'm behaving like I have time to digress, which I actually don't because although the showing is tonight, I'm getting ready earlier on in the piece because we have lots of things to do which involve lots and lots of children and mess and everything involved in caring for the family until then and this is the only time we get to get ready, so I'm going to take advantage of it. Wow, I'm another person with brows on. And yes, watching the movie, you've probably been there, done that, but what is exciting for me is that I'm leaving the house to do so, because most of our movie watching happens if you're lucky once a month and that's on a laptop. And as you know, I don't let any moment pass me by. I'm going to embody the experience by channeling what Barbie means to us. Since COVID, I don't want to let any moment in life just pass us by. I don't want to leave my clothes or makeup sitting in the drawer or in a cupboard. I wanted to create a little moment for this doll that basically we all grew up playing with. And I intend to do that with some new makeup and creating a little fun movie night outfit. And yes, this video includes a tasteful amount of pink. So if this stereotypical color offends you, click off now. Just bear in mind, it's a tasteful, a tasteful amount of pink. Now I'm struggling to with these nails get this package open but let's take a moment for this package so new makeup to the very tiny basic makeup collection that I have is this piece by Shantakai this is part of their meadow collection which absolutely took off by the time I got my hands on this eyeshadow palette they were all basically sold out so whilst you can well observe for yourself first I'd get my hands on this let me show you the packaging. It's got a beautiful glossy front with some what appears to be a lavender-like flower. And it's got lovely Shantakai branding on the front. And we open. Take two. And we open. Now this is a very modest palette. Just comes with a small selection of colours which I actually prefer because when there are too many I get overwhelmed and my novice makeup skills cannot handle that. So we have here a light pink, a matte brown, a darker shimmery brown, and then this beautiful like golden 
yellowy shimmer. So, so excited to try this out. Clearly, because the palette includes a bit of pink, I thought it would be appropriate for us to use it for our eye look today. So, let's commence our Barbie makeup look. And I'm going to begin by taking a little bit of the brown and contouring the lid of my eye first. Now, I'm going to zoom you in very uncomfortably so because... I, again, am quite a novice to makeup application. I know a few things, but I haven't, ironically, been doing this for many years because I had really bad skin. So now that my skin is cooperating, I can afford to dabble in makeup. So my eye shape is interesting. So I have kind of a hooded lid on this eye, but not so much on this eye. But regardless, I don't really have a lot of real estate in the lid area so what i'm going to do is i'm going to begin by contouring my crease first and trying to push that in to create more of a crease where there is none so sorry let me get all my angles right here well wow, this is really hard to do without making a face and i've already gone over the crease oh dear we have brushes and we can brush it off now i'm going to really push it in to the crease Really, to really define it and set it apart from the rest of the eye and as you can see the pigment from this Shantikai eyeshadow is lovely and blendy and creamy. So I'm trying to create a rounded eye shape here because if I was to take this out even further than I have I would be creating more of a more of a sharper sort of cat eye look of which I don't really want today because I feel like a doll or a Barbie doll has more like open dolly kind of eyes so I wanted to go for that instead. I'm going to grab another brush this one's a little bit more floofy this is from Tarte and I'm going to go in with the shimmery brown shade and I'm going to just go in the inner corner And just define that a little bit with the shimmer and then I might even take it above my crease a little bit just near the brow bone just to blend it out create a little bit of depth now with my flat brush again I'm going to dip in to the pink just look at that shade that color is so Barbie pink. And I believe this is the color that probably made people buy the collection because there is a lot of rose and a lot of pink in the Shantikai Meadow collection. I'm going to apply that from the middle out and I might even take it into my crease a little bit just to make sure the people can see that there is a bit of pink in my eye makeup because once again I've got a hooded eye and if I was to look at you straight on you probably wouldn't even know there is pink in there and I'm also going to add a little bit to my lower lash line just in the outer corner just to put a pop of pink. Now what has to be my favorite shade of the entire collection this beautiful gold shimmery shade. You could even apply this with just your finger if you're in a hurry but because we are pretending we are going to a Barbie premiere we're going to use a brush. So I'm going to apply this to the inner corner and through to the middle a little bit. Stunning. It is like pure molten gold. Wow look at that ombre effect. This palette guys is all you need. And the great thing is you don't just have to wear this to a Barbie premiere you could wear this to any kind of event you wish. Now I'm going to bring it up and into the corners of my eyes because I want to create a little bit of brightness in the middle there. And I think I'll just finish this quite simply with a little bit of a slight wing with some brown eyeshadow. This is a super old one from MAC. In fact, it's not even mine. It's my mother's. And I highly suggest to you, good people of the internet, if you do you have access to a mum and her makeup? Uh, take advantage of it because I can use my mirror. Very handy to have a mirror in a palette like this. Uh, but take advantage of it because we're not all going to be buying 
fresh new makeup every time we you know want a certain color or a certain look just borrow your mums or borrow your friends and then kindly also return it because we can all be a little hopeless with that now I'm just going to take it from the center and then just out a little bit here so just a real subtle shade of brown And this is a lip brush, it's not a professional contouring brush. I might even decide to define the outer corners a little bit. Just to really add to that rounded eye look. And this is the Super Subtle Barbie Eye. And as you can see that gold has really created a lid or accentuated the lid that is showing where basically there is none and you have a little bit of pink creeping through the top and underneath so it's just a very subtle nod to Barbie but a really nice technique this ombre technique if you do have slightly hooded eyes you just want to accentuate any little bit of lid that is showing and you can do that by also accentuating the under eye as well and I'm going to do the other eye now but I will do this off camera because that just took far too long I'll probably end up you know just saying things that aren't relevant to this video because I like to talk about mostly nothing I'm like one of those people give me a microphone and I will sing into it okay both eyes are now done and I'm just going to finish by popping a little bit of concealer on the ends of my eyes there just to create a little bit of sharpness a bit of a lift a bit of a lift to the eye a bit of contouring for the eye I mean can we tell that I don't do makeup tutorials often because I just don't have the terms I've got no terms right is that a bit too sharp okay but this is what the professionals do and today this is exactly what we're doing pretending to be a professional okay I feel like we've we've done something what am I doing? I'm doing some makeup. Would you like to join me, darling? And we have my assistant, pre-planned, of course. Yes, that's right. Now, we do have another Shantikai Meadow piece to finish off this look. However, let's get to something that I didn't have in my makeup repertoire and thought that I desperately needed because this is a real fun fact. I don't have a bronzer. I mean, I do. I have a NARS Laguna sample that I love and have used for years. And I've got one of my mum's, again, stealing makeup from mum that I've never given back, but she's never asked for it back. Uh, almost finished <laughs> Lancome bronzer, which I don't even think exists anymore. Star bronzer. Basically, they're fine, uh, but you can't really see it and they're powders and they, they wear off. So I went into my local beauty store, uh, being Mecca because I, I absolutely love those guys I don't shop anywhere else if I if I can help it and I thought I'd get myself a professional cream bronzer now this one is beautifully packaged by Westman Atelier bless you and this packaging is so beautiful that I don't think I could even part with it I think I'm just going to keep it I do love to keep things in boxes we are together going to explore how to contour the face professionally with a cream bronzer now can we just take a moment for the amazing click of that lid it, it's like look it's it's magnetic it had me there it I wouldn't have even had to see the product as long as it had a magnetic lid and just did this I'm sold simple minds anyway this is the color they had two different shades there this is the more chocolatey one double up is not just a contour but a bronzer as well so face contour stick in truffle. Now this is where my novice makeup knowledge really does shine. I have recently just learned about contouring different face shapes because not every face is the same. And I love how there's road work and a child into the mix now. Now I have, like we all do, a combination face. So I have quite a round face here and yet altogether I'm rather narrow. So I thought I'd try to create a heart shaped face today why i wanted a contour stick is that contour may not be the same as your bronzer bronzer gives warmth contour is usually cooler and kind of sitting in the background and giving you more that chiseled look rather than just bringing the powdery warmth to your face so this color 
this shade, I should say, kind of does both. So, what? I'm so nervous. I'm, I'm dropping everything. Let's give this a go. I, I'm super nervous. All right, how do we get this up? Do we... All right, we twist. We twist. Okay, doesn't that look like a delicious chocolate? I'm going to begin because I've got quite a high forehead. I'm just going to go in here with two lines because I've got a, a heart <laughs> shaped forehead and then because I've got a round sort of face here with I guess lack of definition I'm going to start by basically taking away the space that I don't want so anywhere we apply shadow we take away space that we don't want people to see so I'm going to create a little heart here, almost like the concept of doing a three. I might even bring that up a little bit. And then I'm going to go down and near my chin. So I'm just trying to take away the heaviness of the gel here as well. So just doing that. Now that looks rather heavy and I'm a little bit concerned. So I might start contouring this side before I even do anything to that side so we can compare. So let's begin with the safe space which is the forehead here and I'm just going to blend that out and it blends out super well. Oh my goodness this is even better than a powder. Wow. Now we're going to attack. <laughs> attack. That's kind of what I feel like I've done to myself. Really wall painted myself. So I'm going to just blend out in upward strokes the contour on the sides of my face and we're going to try to diffuse the beard by bringing it down and really just melting it into the skin. And as you can see, it's already kind of just melted away, which is what you want. Wow, that's already made such a difference. I just feel like this side of my face is so much more slimmer than this side and that's just from applying just that little bit of contour. I might chisel this in a little bit more so I might grab a little bit more of this and just really carve out that cheekbone. Okay that was successful so I'm going to do the other side and then we will tackle a little bit of the nose if we're brave. Wow could the noises become any more interfering in this video? Real real professional Opal just keep it coming. So basically the main concept of the way that I'm contouring my face is I'm sticking to the outer perimeter of my face so I'm not bringing it too far in. I'm basically sticking to the outer areas that I want to bring into shadow and mystery basically. Fine that contour is now done and I almost feel like it's not very visible but I think that it's because my lighting is just so bad in this space at the moment that it's hard to see what I've done in real daylight. Okay, now let's do a little bit of the nose. So I'm going to go underneath to create that shorter nose and then very scarily I'm going to take the edge of this and just bring it in right to the center. Mm -hmm. I, as you can see I have a, a bump on my nose that I don't want quite visible so I'm being very light-handed here and not doing much I'm just going to blend that I might even just use my finger to keep that in the center of my nose and then just a little bit across the middle there and blend out the bottom apply a little bit of a contour to the brow bone and just all the faces that I'm pulling it's going to buff that out slightly and I'm going to leave the contouring there for now. Do you know what this reminds me of actually? This reminds me of my cake tutorials where I've done something for the first time and therefore it's more of a cake journey or this is like a makeup journey rather than a I know all and telling you all. It's kind of we're learning along the way. It's a it's a makeup learning experience. Not to mention, it's not every day that I wake up and think, hey, I'm going to look like Barbie today. Bless you. Thank you. Yes, any more? No, are we done? I'm done. Done, okay. Where was I? Okay, contour is done, nose is done. We're going to leave it there before we over contour ourselves. And we are going to move on next to... 
bronzer, bronzer, right, bronzer. Whilst I was in store, the uh, lovely makeup artist not only showed me the contour stick, but I mean, how beautiful and expensive is this packaging? It's like unboxing jewelry. This is, in fact, this compact is very much like jewelry, save the fact that I've stuck my fingerprints all over it. This is the Westman Atelier bronzer. This is like nothing I've ever used before in my life. It is a, again, having trouble opening the package. How does one... Yes. There's not even like a little ledge to open it. Can I even... Pause. Okay, I'm calling, I'm calling an intermission. Okay, that was like trying to shuck an oyster. Okay. So just be warned, there's nothing, there's no ledge here to help you open this if you have nails. But this is the Westman Atelier Super Loaded Tinted Highlight. So it's not quite a bronzer. It's, well, it's a bronzer because of the shade, but they're calling it a tinted highlight, which is basically what it is. And I'm going to use a floofy brush for this one. This is a double-ended one from Mecca. And I'm going to pop this in here and just swoop it on my cheekbones like so. And as you can see, it just gives a beautiful, luminous iridescence with a slight, a slight colour. So I'm just going to do that to the other side as well. And it appears you don't need much of this. Bringing it into the temples as well. I feel very glowy and I'm glad I won't have to attempt to open this again because that was, uh, that was just too difficult. <laughs> For a Friday afternoon. Okay, now to the pink portion of this makeup tutorial. Another little piece of capsule wardrobe makeup collection. Everybody needs a Laura Mercier blush. And no, not the translucent powder. I have used the translucent powder for many years. I did find a better one. But the blushes, there's none to rival it. They are just the most pigmented, the most blurring beautiful bronzers. You can see them day or night. They stay on your face. They're long wearing and they come in beautiful natural shades. This one is the shade Rose. So I'm going to use this to add a little bit more of dimension to my face because it's looking a little bit flat still. And we need just a bit of color to just bring some life into it and perhaps lift, lift the cheeks a little. So going in with a little packed brush here for this just to really concentrate where I want to place my blush and I like to place my blush quite high and I also like to bring it around near the eyebrow a little bit and around the eye. Wow, just look at the warmth that that's given. It's so Barbie. I'm going to add a little bit to the nose in like the inner corners like a natural flush. Like I've just been out in the sun even though I look a little bit corpse like right now far too close to the to the lighting I think let's just move back slightly okay we are near the finish line I'm just going to add a bit of life and skin like texture to my face it's quite matte looking to just add my all nighter spray by Urban Decay the only spray that I have used and have been very pleased with it because it does again leave your makeup hanging on all day and gives a beautiful natural skin finish and then just to set everything down to make sure you don't get too oily throughout the night I like to go over with a bit of setting powder this one's by Hourglass and this gives a nice candlelit glow to the skin and I'm just using a really big floofy brush for this magnificent and then a final spray of the all-nighter and of course pack it down with a fancy pink fan and make like you're in Spanish midday drama. Where were we? My makeup table is, let me show you. It's in a state. It's a state is what it is. Now to really complete the look, I feel like some fake lashes would just do the most, uh, but I don't have any and I don't have the skills for uh, glue and tweezers because that would just end in disaster. So I'm just going to apply my regular mascara and I shall see you for the lip. Okay, we are at the 
finish line. We're going to line our lips, make sure your pencil is sharpened. And I only just recently discovered that why I haven't been able to sharpen my pencils for years is because I've been using like school pencil sharpeners, like the ones that the kids get for free in the beginning year of school package. Uh, but they never worked, so please go to your local makeup store and buy a professional one. Okay, lips are lined. We can actually see that they're there on my face because they're covered in foundation. And our final Shantikai product, this one, is the Lip Chic Meadow. So the Lip Chic or Lip Chic <laughs> uh, lipstick from the Meadow collection in the shade Meadow. I've already used a little bit of this, but as you can see, it's a beautiful peach pink which is just me. I love a peachy pink, slightly orangey lipstick. tight, <coughs> And it's got a lovely yeah. satin finish. And to be just that little bit extra, I'm going to pop a little bit of this Chanel. Again, this is my mum's and it's running out and they don't make this shade anymore. But they do make the range. This is the their Glossier uh, lip collection. And... In shade 161 which is non-existent sadly just to add a little bit more sparkle just in the middle there incidentally makes the lips just look that little bit more big and juicy and this is minus minus the clips of course is the final subtle Barbie look I really hope you enjoyed the new makeup pieces that I have picked up they were an investment, but I only wear makeup once a week, so it's probably going to take me about another 10 years for me to finish these products, to be quite honest with you. Now, let's get into the two looks that I've been thinking about for this Barbie premiere, the first one of which I'm already wearing, so we're going to save time. Now we have the background ambience of Bat Wheels, which is my little one's favourite YouTube show. It's like a... A, a take on Batman. Could could there be any more versions of Batman? Anyway, back to topic. So if I was actually going to the premiere of Barbie, do you know what I would actually do, and with confidence, is I'd wear exactly what I'm wearing now, which is basically pyjamas. Although, this could be passed for loungewear as well. These aren't just, well, these are very special pyjamas. I wouldn't sleep in these, I must say. But if you were that bougie uh, and you wanted to sleep in something so fine, you, you could. These are the infamous sleeper lounge suits. Have always had my eye on them and never had the courage to purchase one <laughs> until it went on a significant sale. And there was one left and I snapped it up. So. You always find these specials online, so I suggest if you are going to buy a sleeper piece, I suggest going online. I actually don't think you can buy them in this country in real life anyway. So, I think sleeper could be an American brand, and I also could be completely wrong here because we just make it up as we go along around here. You fake it till you make it. Now, I've deliberately left the hair clips in. No, there is no mistake in that. I have deliberately left them in because I feel like it completes the look. Also, I have added my favorite shoe of all time, which are these fluffy, fantastic mules. Got these years ago from a brand called Daisy. Never seen the likes of anything like this again, but to complete the look are uh, a fluffy purse. If I had one, that would be the most perfect accessory and you are ready for a Barbie premiere. Tell me, where else could you get away with wearing this, except to a Barbie premiere? And as much as I would love to wear this to my movie experience tonight, because I'm going to be so, so comfortable, I need to opt for something a little bit more sensible, because let's face it, people, we are in the suburbs, and I am a very, very ordinary person. If I was watching this movie on my laptop at home, however, I would totally, totally be wearing this in the comfort of my own home. In real life, I'll be wearing this, however. <laughs> I thought I would opt for something a little bit more dressed down, casual, comfortable. I actually would have loved to have worn, I have these pink and purple leggings that I absolutely love. However, it's that time of the month for me and I just want something that's not so leggy. You know, I just want something that skims over the legs. So I opted for this denim skirt. This is actually from Cotton 
on and uh, denim midi skirts are all the range now so I didn't have one in my arsenal and whenever a trend piece comes along you always buy them at an affordable price so I think I'll be uh, keeping the denim skirt around for years to come actually because it's quite mature age appropriate and obviously I had to add a touch of pink with this very old cardigan from Review. Review do vintage style clothing, obviously brand new, but a real nod to the 1950s is their general style, super feminine, and their range of cardigans are the best. So if you're ever shopping for a cardigan and want a classic capsule forever piece, I suggest going to Review. As you can see, the crop ending on just the right point at the waist, like it's not overly cropped. It's just so classic and so, what was that show, Happy Days? With the fonds and the milkshakes and the burgers. Anyway, I would love to keep these clips in. As you can see, I don't, I do not want to part with these clips because they just add, they just add to the look. Um, however, they, they must come off for a very practical everyday movie night. And also popped on, this is quite a, a bit of a trivial piece, these super old trainers from a brand called Department of Finery. And it's the only pink trainers that I own. They have a touch of gold at the bottom. And fun fact, they were the first pair of leather sneakers that I ever bought on my uh, fashion and beauty enlightenment journey, which was a few years ago now. But... I am holding on to them for sentimental reasons, even though they don't get worn very often. But when a Barbie premiere calls, one must wear the appropriate footwear. I have literally one more minute at my disposal and it's going to be a chilly night tonight. So I thought I would throw on a bit of a oversized cardigan. This is a blazer cardigan. I mentioned this in uh, my autumn fashion essentials vlog. I'll link it up above but I will leave it linked down below. I believe it's still available and I think it's on sale at the moment. What I love is that it's double breasted and oversized and cozy. And yes, it's slight sort of a, a lemon cream, which I didn't quite realize when I bought it. This oversized look of the cardigan matched with the midi skirt and the trainers. I'm really digging this kind of feminine slouchy look. A real nod to the 80s. Maybe not so much a nod to Barbie unless there was an 80s Barbie. I'm sure she's out there somewhere. I myself like to model myself after the 1950s original Barbie. To me she was the most fabulous of all the Barbies. And one final touch that I forgot, absolutely forgot, also from Cotton On is, let me just zoom in because the lighting is quite terrible, is this wonderful rose choker. I haven't worn a rose choker since I saw my mum wear one back in the 90s but I saw this and thought this was so Chanel-esque and perhaps not so Barbie but I just thought a wonderful feminine accessory just to make what is a very ordinary outfit just that little bit more interesting. And just a little close-up visual here. The petals are beautifully separated and I think this would just make such a statement out of any really boring outfit. It's just such an unexpected accessory that I thought I must, I must have this. But enough about Barbies. I literally, literally have to get on my feet and run out the door. I have children to pick up and then feed and bathe and entertain and so forth. <laughs> And I'm going to be looking probably a lot less glamorous for the visible part of this vlog, but I will link all products, uh, makeup products that I featured or any bits and pieces like these hair clips down in the description box below if you're interested. And to me, the actual star of the show, which is so strange, are these really cheap <laughs> hair clips that I got from Cotton On because they make me feel like a professional makeup applicator like Kylie Jenner. Clip my hair back, so my foundation doesn't get in my hair. In fact, I think they're more than like just a practical thing. They're like an accessory. Like I would have no issue wearing this out of the house. And anyway, out of the house, I must go. I will see you shortly for less glamorous real life situation vlogging, which I majority do if any of you are remotely interested in, in, in that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.